ان الحمد لله نحمده ونستعينه ونستهديه ونستغفره ونتوب اليه ونؤمن به ونتوكل عليه ونعوذ بالله من شرور انفسنا ومن سيئات اعمالنا من يهده الله فلا مضل له ومن يضلل فلا هادي له واشهد ان لا اله الا الله وحده لا شريك له واشهد ان محمدا عبده ورسوله اللهم صل وسلم وبارك على سيدنا محمد النبي الامي وعلى اله وصحبه وسلم تسليما كثيرا يا ايها الذين امنوا اتقوا الله حق تقاته اتقوا الله حق تقاته ولا تموتن الا وانتم مسلمون يا ايها الذين امنوا اتقوا الله وقولوا قولا سديدا يصلح لكم اعمالكم ويغفر لكم ذنوبكم ومن يطع الله ورسوله فقد فاز فوزا عظيما الحمد لله والشكر لله we thank Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala we praise him we glorify him subhanahu wa ta'ala alhamdulillah wa shukr lillah all of the blessings that we are enjoying and experiencing this beautiful beautiful day alhamdulillah Allah ta'ala has brought us together has gathered us on the day of gathering the day of jumu'ah the beautiful blessed friday and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has brought us here safely and soundly alhamdulillah wa shukr lillah that this is one of the implications of his name al jamak Allah Ta'ala is the one who gathers. And whenever there is a gathering, it is an implication. What Allah, it is the deed of Allah. Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala is the one that creates every gathering. And so for him to gather us in this place and in this time, this sacred place and this sacred time is something that we should be grateful for. Is that whenever Allah Ta'ala grants us to be to be in a circumstance to do whatever he subhanahu wa ta'ala loves, where his rida is, where his divine pleasure it is, then this is an occasion of great joy. In that alone let them rejoice. Say it by with the uh, great blessing of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and his tremendous mercy for Bidalik for that alone. And just in grammar when it's brought forth before the verb, it means only and nothing else. But be that and that alone, let them celebrate, let them rejoice. And so the heart of the believer, when there is when there is tawfiq, when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is creating good in their lives, in the life of the believer, this is a joy that the believer has, recognizing the tawfiq of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala when Allah inspires to do what he loves. And this is what we have to realize is that when we seek Allah's good pleasure, that if we find ourselves in those occasions on the day of Jum'ah, at the Blessed Prayer, and praying our five prayers on time, ideally in a, in a Jama'ah, in a group, ideally in the Masjid, if not in the Masjid, then at least in a Jama'ah. And that uh, fasting for Ramadan, speaking of sacred time and sacred place, and tawfiq from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, we have just finished Fajr, and alhamdulillah, Sha'ban is here. And Allah ta'ala, just as this gathering is an implication of His name, al Jamia. The passing of time is an implication, is an implication of his names Al Muqaddim and Al Muakhir. Allah Ta'ala is Al Muqaddim, the one that puts things forward. And he is Al Muakhir, the one that delays. And so with the passing of time, as we experience day and night, followed by day and night and month after month, this is the deed of Allah. This is the act of Allah Subhanahu wa Ta'ala. He is the creator of time. And so he has put forward or put behind us from our perspective, Raja, and he has put forward now Sha'ban, and that beyond that awaits us, inshallah, the blessed sacred month of Ramadan. And so this is something to be cognizant of, is that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the one who is, he is the arranger of our circumstances, and he is the arranger of our affairs, and he is the arranger of our situations in our days and our nights. And these days and nights are important. And as we, as we realize, that we are here on Yom Jum'ah and Ramadan is approaching and we reflect on the words of our beloved messenger وسلم, in which he said وسلم, that as salawat al-khams wal jum'ah ila jum'ah wa ramadan ila ramadan mukaffiratun lima baynahunna lima nujtaniba al-kabaya O Kamahan sallallahu that from the five daily prayers that Allah Ta'ala puts forward and puts behind us as we go through them <coughs> between the five days, prayer to prayer, and each day and night. Jum'ah to Jum'ah, from our previous Jum'ah to today, and then inshallah, the Jum'ah to come. 
Ramadan to Ramadan, every year, the sake of the most important month of the believer in terms of sacred time and devotion to Allah. Ramadan to Ramadan, وَكَفِّرَاتٌ لِمَا بَيْنُهُنَّ These are situations and circumstances of expiation for what's between them, for our mistakes and our slips and our sins between them, as long as we avoid the kabaya, the enormities of Islam, as long as we avoid the major sins of Islam, as long as we avoid what is outright haram. Okay, so if we are vigilant, if we are vigilant in implementing the ethics of our religion, of being keen on what every Jummah begins with, the taqullah haqqa tulqati, that have taqwa of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, align ourselves with the divine pleasure and avoid taqwa from lufaya, which is a shield. So to shield ourselves from what Allah hates, to always be in a situation that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is pleased with and to never be in a situation that He hates. If we struggle and we strive to do this, then between prayers, Allah Ta'ala forgives whatever mistakes you made between the prayers. And between from Jummah to Jummah, Allah Ta'ala forgives that. And from Ramadan to Ramadan, Allah Ta'ala forgives that. This is tremendous, tremendous mercy. And so now we have the implication of His name, Al Ghafur, the one who forgives. Al Ghafar, these are amazing names that we need to reflect on. The names and attributes of our Creator, Subhanahu Ta'ala. Al Ghafur, Al Ghafar, Ghafir that the one who forgives, and each of these has different nuances because in the Arabic language these have different emphatic forms of Ghafur, Ghafar, the one who forgives often, the one who forgives even great things, even major sins, Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala, we have to turn to him in Tawbah. And so reflecting on these meanings that are ethics of Islam and that if we want to, as we come to Ramadan now, as we approach Ramadan, inshallah, is that realizing that it's the month that we reconnect with the Qur'an and we have, to real, we have to transcend this tendency of simply going through the Qur'an as a devotional recitation. That's important. The Qur'an is a qira'ah. It is something to recite. Allah has revealed it, Qur'an in Arabic, as an Arabic recital, and we recite it. But it's not merely a recital. It is meant to be embodied in the human being. When our mother Aisha was asked about the character, about the person of the best of creation, وسلم, she said, كَانَ خُلُقُهُ Quran." His person, his character, the way he was, was the Qur'an. This is the purpose, this is the goal. This is the intended outcome when we engage the Qur'an, is to embody these akhlaq, to embody these prophetic traits, such that we become, our khulaq become the Qur'an, insha'Allah. And this is not difficult for Allah, and this is not something to think that we, we can't be, realize these meanings that only a Prophet can, can embody taqwa and everyone else is just lost. No, the Prophet is sent as an exemplar for us to emulate. And Allah Ta'ala does nothing abathan, He does nothing in vain and for no purpose. He has hikmah, He has divine wisdom. And of His wisdom in sending us Prophets is for us to emulate them. Which is one of the wisdoms that they are human Prophets. And the Qur'an talks about that. Why were they not sent as angels as Prophets? That people cannot emulate angels. Angels do not marry. Angels do not eat and drink. Angels do not have the human needs that we do. But Allah Ta'ala sent prophets and messengers والسلام, in our own jinns, as it were. In our own genus, at least outwardly. And so we need to, we have, we have people to emulate. And so to emulate the prophetic virtues and to avoid the vices. And this is something that we want to emphasize for ourselves ourselves and everyone else, is to really approach Ramadan, not simply to reconnect with the Qur'an in terms of doing a khatam, not simply to reconnect with the Qur'an in terms of praying many prayers at night, not simply to reconnect with the Qur'an in terms of the reciting aspect of it, which is important, we're not denying that, but to transcend and to really engage the ethics of the Qur'an, and to take at least one ayy, find one vice that we're stuck in, Find one vice that we that has been embedded in our persona, and to take and to take ourselves to task to remove it. Make it a goal. Some of us might struggle with riba. Some of them, some of us might str struggle with speaking ill of others. And the Prophet ﷺ he defined it. He said, "Thikruka akhaka bima yakra," mentioning anything about your brother that he would not like, saying anything about an absent person that they wouldn't like. These are, these are very serious things and one of the calamities of our time 
one of the calamities of our time is that the, our, the science of our ethics, the science of our practical spirituality, has been removed from the public discourse. And so people are not learning this science. And, and one of the unfortunate calamities, and Imam Ghazali warned about it at his time, a fortiori our time, is that even people of knowledge are not practicing these ethics. Even people of knowledge are studying only the religion in its outward manifestation. And they're not learning the inward realities that must be embodied. This is a travesty of our time. And one of the, one of the, the, the vile consequences of this is that some people might be even in the company of a religious teacher or scholar and find them backbiting. This is a reality. And how will the rest of us be guided? And how will our children be guided if even some of the people of knowledge, quote unquote, who have the outer knowledge, they have many things memorized and they're able to teach various uh, 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 subjects of our religion in the outward, but they have not embodied these virtues and they have not avoided these vices. And so really to take ourselves to task, what is our speech like when we speak of others? Sayyidina Isa Islam, he was once asked uh, by his disciples, uh, uh, give us what, uh, uh, osina, osin, osina, you know, give us some advice. He said, that people, don't ever open your mouth. They said, La we, we can't do that. We have to at least speak. He said, If you have to speak, speak only the good. Don't ever speak about anyone if they're not there unless it's a praise. Or unless it's something positive. And the Prophet he said a person might a word might come out of his mouth that he gives no attention to, he gives no weight to. It's not a big deal. And because of that, that he thought was so insignificant, he is plunged into the depths of the fire. But I didn't know. And so to, to take, take ourselves to task with these sins. Another sin of the tongue that many of us are not even aware of as a sin, which is a, another indication of this, the travesty of our times, is that this, is, this science is not at the forefront of the discourse, is what's called al khawf in Baldin. And Imam al Ghazali is Ahyanamuddin in the chapter on vices of the tongue. He discusses this. And many of our ethicists have discussed this vice. Al-Khawf al Baldin to engage in uh, speech of, the, the, of, of what's unlawful in Islam, to speak of sin. To mention sin, people don't know this, even to mention sin is a sin. Al-Khawf al Baldin. Just to talk about sins, the ulama say if there's no need or benefit, sometimes there's a need. When a teacher or someone of authority has to advise or counsel people to warn them of a situation, there's a, there are certain diseases plaguing society, we need to warn, discuss these issues so that we can come up with solutions, so that we can pr protect ourselves and our children. That's excused. If there's a need or a benefit, but if it's just istimda'an, just out of hanging out and, oh, did you hear about this? And so-and-so in the news did this, and it's something haram in our sharia, we just committed a sin. Something very scary. And people wonder, like, how come in the, pr the prayer doesn't have meaning for me? How come I don't experience, you know, the connection with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and his dhikr in my prayer? How come I'm not get, you know, feeling that spirituality in my salat? How come when I say Allah Akbar in the takbir, suddenly it's just thinking and thoughts and everything in between of my dunya and my dunya and my dunya? And all the things I have to do, and all the people that offended me today, and all the people that I'm going to sit at today, and all the grudges that are in my heart. How come my prayer is all dhikr and nafs, just rem remembrance of myself and my low state, and all the pathetic things of my life? And, and so and so insulted me, and my reputation, and that one picture of mine on Facebook. Why is my prayer filled with these things? Well, we need, are we taking ourselves to task between the prayer? Are we avoiding the kabair? Are we avoiding the outright haram in between the prayer? If, we, if our tongues are filled with the haram, if our tongues are filled with vices, then our prayer will not have meaning. And we won't have the halal, we won't have the sweetness of prayer. Our fasting won't have meaning. Our charity won't have meaning. We will not, when we make remembrance of Allah, when we try to sit down and do dhikr in our mornings and our evenings, it's just going to be thoughts and khawatir that fill our brains and fill our minds. And Allah's remembrance will just stay on the tongue, if at all. The, the, the doorway to having these to having our connection with Allah infused with meaning, infused with reality, is to be vigilant on ourselves. Ittaqullah haqqa tuqati. Ittaqullah of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Ibn Mas'ud said to Allah ta'ala, it's in Tabarani. He said that, A'adhu nas khataya yawman qiyamah, 
أكثرهم صودا في الباطل. أعظم من the greatest of people خطايا in terms of sins, sins and sins and sins and sins on يوم القيامة أكثرهم صودا في الباطل. The ones that were most proliferate, the, the ones who engage the most in speaking of sin, the ones who talk most about sin without any need or benefit. Ibn Masur was one of the fuqaha of the Sahaba, one of the great jurists of our Sahaba. And he wouldn't know that the hadith is mawquf, it's, he said it, so, uh, Allah be pleased with him. But he wouldn't have that knowledge unless he got it from the Prophet How would he know something about the unseen, about the Yawm Al-Qiyamah? Unless he, and this is one of the things that, on the side, that Ibn Mas'ud on his personality, he hardly said, Father Rasulullah He was so scared of, the weightiness of citing the messenger, in case he got the wording wrong, he would often teach it as his own from himself, that this is something, as an ethic that he learned. But it was understood by his students that he got it from the Prophet ﷺ. And so taking these seriously, riba khawd fil batil. Another one is namima, tail-bearing. La yadkhulu jannata an ammam, the Prophet said wasallam. sahih hadith, the one who bears tails will not enter paradise. Unless Allah forgives him. He's in the Mashiach of Allah. But the Hadith says he won't. What is tail bearing? It's to convey to someone about someone else to ruin their relationship. Do you, do you know what someone said about you? Do you know what they mentioned about you? Do you know what they thought of your work? They were totally insulted. They were totally whatever. Such as saying anything about someone, such that, that they would create a grudge or a, 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 a bad relationship between the two. This is tailoring. And Imam Ghazali, he says that if someone comes to you with tailoring, saying anything that so and so said this about you, he said you have to, at that moment, you have to hate that person in your heart because you have to hate that haram. He said it's wajib. Imam Ghazali was very strict. We think of Ghazali. Hujjat al-Islam, the reviver of spirituality, the one who consolidated the sciences. If you look at his ethics, he was very strict, very rigid when it comes to these vices and taqtaw, issues of taqtaw. And he said at that moment, if a person comes to you, you have to hate him for the sake of Allah. For the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And you have to correct him right then, you have to tell him, you're not, you're not supposed to do this. You're not supposed to tell me about someone else. This is tell this is namima, and Allah has made it haram. These are serious issues. And then there's vices of the heart. There's vices of the heart. Hasad. How do we feel? What's our initial feeling when we see someone else receive a blessing from Allah SWT? What's our initial Is there any discomfort when someone else gets that position, when someone else gets that opening, when someone else gets that? Iyaku al Hasad, the Prophet said. Beware of Hasad. Fain al Hasad yakul al Hasanat kama taqul al Nar al Hatab. Envy will eat your good deeds just like fire will eat wood. And so all of the, you know, if, if people in Ramadan are spending their nights in Taraweeh and reading the Qur'an in the day and doing Khatm of Qur'an, these are all nawaf and extra good deeds. They're not wajib. And they have hasad then when their fellow at work or at school or in the family or in the community, get some position, get some opening, and they feel discomfort with that, suddenly all those deeds are gone. <laughs> like fire eats wood. It destroys good deeds. Even the discomfort of someone else, because al hasid adu ni'mati, our masters say on the expressing the tongue of the divine, the language of the divine, the, the envious one is the enemy of my blessing. Why are we uncomfortable if Allah Ta'ala gives a blessing to someone else? Why are we uncomfortable? Al-Hasid Jahid, لَيَنَّهُ لَا يَرْضَى بِقَضَاءِ الْوَاحِدِ Imam Qushayri says, The envier is in, is in a way a denier of the divine. Because he's not content with the, the decree of the one. Allah decreed for someone else to get a position. And it happens in our community. Sometimes someone else's son, someone else's child memorized more Qur'an. You feel a little discomfort. My child is someone else's. I mean, how are we? Where is our adin al nasiha? Where is that prophetic virtue of the Quran? Our deen, our deen, the entire religion is wishing well for others. <laughs> 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 
None of you have true iman. None of you have perfected iman until you love for your brother. Yeah, I mean, the, the believer, when the, the person next to them gets an opening, it's a joy for them. Alhamdulillah. Alhamdulillah. To take these meetings seriously. Anger. Are we, what's our, what's our, how are we with anger? The Prophet said to our a companion came, also oh, give me some nasiha. He said, that's out though. Don't ever get angry. I.e. for your own ego, if it's not for Allah. Don't ever get angry. فَرَدَّ الْإِرَانَ And he repeated it. Osini, okay, give me more. لا Don't get angry. Okay, I get it. Give me more. لا Don't get angry. Okay, fine. What next? لا تَمْتَرَ لا تَمْتَرَ لا He repeated it over and over and over. How are we with our families? How are we? Do we get annoyed with our family members? How are we with our spouses? خَيْرُكُمْ خَيْرُكُمْ لِأَهْلِ وَأَنَا خَيْرُكُمْ لِأَهْلِ The Prophet says on something. The best of you are the best of their spouses. And I am the best of anyone to their spouse. Yes, read the Qur'an in Ramadan. Yes, pray to the in Ramadan. But be Quranic with your wife. Be Quranic with your husband. Be Quranic with your brothers and sisters. Be Quranic with the people in your workplace. Be Quranic with your speech and how you speak of others. Be Quranic in what you allow in your ear. Be Quranic and prophetic in your person. That the strong believer is better and more beloved to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala than the weak believer, but there's good in both. And the commentators mentioned that this is the strength and the fortitude, first and foremost, spiritually, to be vigorous and real with oneself and to take oneself to task. And it has, it's going to be uncomfortable in the beginning. If a person has an anger problem, it's going to be uncomfortable. If a person has a problem with envy, it's going to be uncomfortable. If a person has a problem with their speech, speaking ill of others, it's going to be uncomfortable. But to take it to a mu'min al qawi, the one that is strong in really working on themselves, khayrun wa ahabhu ila Allah, is better and more beloved to Allah than a mu'min al da'if, than the one who is weak in these things. Well, if you couldn't fail, but because of their faith, there's good in all. Ihris ala ma Be avid and keen for everything that benefits you. Wasta'in billah and seek help of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Wala ta'jaz and do not be weak. And this is the, the sunnah of approaching all of these things. Is to be avid and keen. Ihris ala ma Be avid and keen on embodying these virtues and removing these vices from oneself. Be avid and keen. Really seek it with jit. Wasta'in billah and don't think you can do it on your own. Seek help of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And this is the first step is if we find any of these vices in ourselves, is to make genuine dua to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Oh Allah, I have I'm very I'm I'm pathetic. I have an anger problem with my spouse. Oh Allah, I can't control my speech. I fall into backbiting every day. Oh Allah, I'm genuine, I'm really envious of so and so. And I can't get it out of my heart and my mind. Please help me. I'm your servant and I genuinely want to improve. Help me. Wasta'in billah. Wasta'in billah. And Allah Ta'ala, He's so merciful. And this is the first 10 days of Ramadan, our young Rahman. Allah Ta'ala is so merciful. If we turn to Him genuinely, there's no way He won't respond to the dua. Udu Allah wa antum muqinuna bil ijabah. The Prophet says, when you make dua, be absolutely certain that Allah will give it to you. 
Yeah. If he unties or not, the knot of your tongue. If he unties the knot of your tongue, such that you start asking for something, realize he wants to give it to you. The greatest sign that Allah will give us tawfiq to change is that we're asking for his help to change. The greatest indication and the greatest proof that Allah wants us to realize these meanings is the fact that he made us mu'min in the first place. The fact that he made us believers to, to, give, to grant us tawfiq, to actually believe in him, especially in our time, is the greatest indication he wants to take us all the way in this religion, all the way to the highest realms of walaya, iman, and taqwa. Ala inna awliya wa la khufun alayhim wa la muyaqsanun alayhina amanu wa kanu yattakun. Who are the people closest to Allah? They have, they believe and they can get taqun. They are consistently working on themselves and improving themselves. And the indication that Allah wanted to give them tawfiq and can get taqun is alladina amanu. The fact that He gave them tawfiq to believe in the first place. And so wasta'in billah. Turn to Allah. But then look at the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, Jawam al-Kalam. The brilliant speech of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam is that he, 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 he says, Ihris ala ma Be adam keen. This is take the meaning. It's not just sit around and make dua and then engage in all those vices. No. Be struggle to work on oneself, but seek help in Allah. And then he again says, Wala ta'jaz. Don't be weak. Don't be weak. Be strong. Be real. Stand up to these meanings. Khairukum khairukum li ahli. You know, to be to be the best to your to your spouse. Wala ta'jaz. And so the, the key is isti'an billah, is to seek help with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. But it's surrounded in the prophetic speech with means. The isti'an billah is in the heart. Turning to Allah to help us in re moral rectification, that's in the heart and on the tongue. But in terms of actually working on ourselves, this is, he surrounded it, he pre prefaced it and ended it. Ihris ala man fa'wa. Be avid for what benefits you, wala ta'ajiz, wa ta and do not be weak. Wala lu tukulli shayin. Fa'al lo kana kada, la kana kada wa kada. Walakin kul kul qaddar Allah wa man sha'a fa'al fa'inna lo taftahu ala shaytan. O kama qala sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And do not say for anything that occurred. If only such and such had happened, then it would have been different. But rather say, Allah had decreed it. And whatever He decrees, comes, whatever He wills comes to pass. Because if only, no, opens up the door to the devil. Opens up the working of the devil. Open, opens up the... And so this is a, a perfect uh, virtue to end with, is just to be content with the decree of Allah. To be content with the decree of Allah. And that whatever has... Uh, in our families or communities, just to let go. No grudges. <coughs> it was decreed from Allah SWT, and no, if only open, opens up the working of the devil. And so to be to move forward, to move forward and seek Allah SWT in embodying these realities. And Shaitan is there. He's, he's, he doesn't give up. Allah Taala has revealed that He is our Adu, He is our enemy. He is our enemy, and he's constantly, the enemy never lets go. They're always on the prowl to get us to fall into these vices, to get us to fall into these sins. And so, uh, Abu Ali al-Anfaqi, one of our masters, he says, مَنْ قَلَّ صَبْرُهُ عَلَىٰ إِلَاجِ عَدُوِهِ سَاعَدَ عَدُوَهُ فِي مُجَالَتِهِ فَهُوَ أَهْلٌ بِأَنْ يَضْحَكَ مِنْهُ الضَّاحِكُ He says that whoever does not have the fortitude and the strength and the patience to deal with his enemy, to deal with his enemy, then he has helped his enemy in fighting him. Whoever does not stand up to the devil and be real with himself and be real with Allah SWT and struggle against the devil in the devil's assault against him, then he has aided the devil in that assault. And so he is worthy to be laughed at by those that laugh. So we shouldn't be a laughing stock of the shaykh. We shouldn't be the laughing stock of the show. We should be people that the angels are proud of and lower the wings from. We should be people that Allah Ta'ala is proud of and He, he, he pridefully boasts of us in the, in the angelic realms. And that when, when we reach a level where these sins are no longer there, when we reach a level where our tongue is free of these sins and our hearts are purified from these sins, when we reach these levels, inshallah, and it will happen for all of us, inshallah, then Allah Ta'ala, He makes a divine proclamation that إِذَا أَحَبُّ 
When Allah Ta'ala in Sahih Bukhari, when Allah Ta'ala loves a servant, he calls Jibreel. And he says, Inna Allah yuhibu fulanan fa'ahibbaha. He says, O oh, Jibreel, verily Allah, he refers to himself Ta'ala as Allah. Verily Allah loves so and so, so you love him. فَيُحِبُّهُ Jibreel. And then Jibreel loves that person. فَنَادَى أَهْلَ فِي أَهْلِ السَّمَاءِ And then Jibreel calls out to all the angels in the celestial realms that fill up the seven heavens. إِنَّ اللَّهَ يُحِبُّ فُلَانًا فَأَحِبُّهُ Verily Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala loves so and so. So all of you love him. فَيُحِبُّهُ أَهْلُ السَّمَاءِ And so all of the angels in the seven heavens love that human being, love that person who is following the Prophet inwardly and outwardly, on their tongue and in their heart and in their limbs. And then there is an acceptance. There is an acceptance that's placed down on earth for that person. Meaning what? <laughs> because such people, most of society doesn't recognize them, unfortunately. Most of society, the people who are engaged in these vices, they can't recognize the people of virtue many times. Sometimes they do, but many times they don't. And so many of our masters say, When this acceptance is placed on earth, it's placed in all of creation, in the inanimate realm. Every tree will love that person. Every leaf will love that person. Every, all the animals that are not Mukallaf will love that person. The whales in the sea will love that person. The ants in the burrows will love that person. The, 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 all of creation, the khalq of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, other than Mukallafin will love that person. But amongst the Mukallafin, the other awliya will love that person. Amongst the Mukallafin, the other awliya will love that person. So this qabul, it's most salient in the entire realm of creation as well as the people, like-minded, like-hearted people of creation. And this on this note will end that Abu Yazid, uh, that, uh, Abu Yazid al-Bustani, he said that the he said that the wali is the rehan Allahi fil Allah. He said that the saint, the person who has embodied these virtues and worked on himself against himself or herself against these vices, he is the rehan of Allah on earth. He is the sweet basil of God on earth. And so other people of the Siddiqs, the people closest to Allah SWT, the highest rank of the awliya, they can scent, they can sense, they can perceive the scent of this Rayhan that's amongst people. And that when they smell this scent, it revives their hearts such that they start They start longing for their master, for Allah SWT, because of the barakah of this person. And so we should strive to be people like this. That the end goal, even on this earth, in the, in the next life it's bliss and paradise. But even on this earth, the end goal of this journey of really rectifying ourselves is to be one of God's reha on earth. And the fellow people of that realm will recognize you. So we ask Allah Ta'ala to make us realize, we ask Allah Ta'ala to give us tawfiq and jaban, to make us reach Ramadan, to get us tawfiq and Ramadan to be people that He is pleased with, and throughout the entire year and our entire lives, we ask Allah Ta'ala to make us people that have long lives and good deeds. As our Prophet says, Salam khayr wa nas man ta'ad amaru wa hasan amaru, the best of people is that whose lives are wrong and their deeds are good. We ask Allah Ta'ala to make us amongst them, we ask Allah Ta'ala to make us amongst the people that Allah Ta'ala loves, and that He commands His angels to love, and that acceptance in His place for them on earth. We ask Allah Ta'ala to make us realize in all of the virtues of the prophetic way and to rid ourselves of the vices of the devils, our enemies. We ask Allah Ta'ala to make us people that make us people that He is pleased with. Rabbana Atina fi ladunka rahmatan wa hiya lana min amrina rashada. Rabbana Atina fi dunya hasana wa fi al-akhir fi hasana wa fi al-adhaab dunar. Rabbana Atafabla minna innaka anta s-sami wa lamin wa tuba alayna innaka anta al-tawab al-rahim. Allah ma'inna nisar fi al-afiyah fi dunya wa al-akhir wa yukul muslim. اللهم إنا نسألك العافية في الدنيا والآخرة، اللهم إنا نسألك العافية في الدنيا والآخرة، ولكل مسلم، اللهم فرج عنا وعن المسلمين في كل مكان، اللهم فرج عنا وعن المسلمين في كل مكان، اللهم فرج عنا وعن المسلمين في كل مكان، إن الله وملائكته يصلون على النبي، يا أيها الذين آمنوا صلوا عليه وسلموا تسليما، اللهم صل وسلم وبارك على سيدنا محمد النبي الأمي، وعلى آله وصحبه وسلم تسليما كثيرا، والحمد لله رب العالمين.